All right. Um, for those of you who are joining us online and around the world, and those of us here at Flock today, um, welcome back. Um, I'm glad that you're here to continue with the Fedora leading uh, Linux distribution development track. Um, it's my pleasure to introduce uh, Michael Cornici. Konechny. Konechny. Ah, almost there. <laughs> um, and I will hand it over to you for a talk today about what's new in the land of releasemonitoring.org 2023 edition. Thank you. As I was already introduced. So this talk is about what's new in the land of releasemonitoring.org. This is the 200, uh, 2023 edition. So you can see I adjust the preview slides. My name is Michal Konečný, and I'm mage from releasemonitoring.org. That is not my official role, don't think about it. So, first thing first, uh, where is my magic hat? Oh, here it is, okay. And, but how we can get it from the slides? Hmm, let's see. Oh, it's gone. There it is. Oh, it's here. Okay, found it. So, now I'm the mage. And let's start with a story. So, one day I was going to my magic tower. As you can see, it was a nice day. Everything sunny. It's, uh, it was uh, like in a, uh, some kind of paradise. Plenty of flowers. And then I got inside. And I found stairs. So I get up. And when going up, I was thinking if what I can see. As you can see, there is a balcony in there. And what do you think I could see from it? Okay, so if nobody knows, it was actually the wall release monitoring.org. It's wall real. And what it is, actually? So, there are two parts of the release monitoring.org. That is the Anitya and the New Hotness. The Anitya, I will show you first because it's just, it's just easy to show, easier to show. Let me just find it. Oh. 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 Okay. Let me fight with it for a moment. Oh, let me open it. <laughs> It'll be easier. Okay, so here is how it looks. This is the Anitya itself. The Anitya is a front end for watching for the releases of your favorite projects, as you can already read. And this is how it looks. And let's go back to the slides. So. And what it allows allows users to add projects for, to watch for new releases. This will allow you to actually see what uh, projects, what versions are available, what version is the newest, and it will allow you plenty of customization for the projects. It automatically checks for new releases of the upstream projects. You can see what is happening there. You can see uh, how, uh, when the version actually came out. And it sends Fedora messages to, uh, to the message bus when the new version is retrieved. So all of this is actually done in the front end. This is what you can see mostly in land of phrasemonitoring.org. But there is the other, the new hotness. The new hotness is kind of somewhere in, inside of the phrasemonitoring.org, but Let's say it's floating island above. And what it does, it's listening to messages emitted, emitted by Anitya, creates or updates Bugzilla when new race is built, uh, found, and it can start scratch builds if configured. This is what you will get if you are a packager and you get notification on Bugzilla. It is the issue created by the new hotness. And now we have some magic numbers. Who doesn't like numbers? For Anitya first. So it will be in this format. I will show you how it was the number in the previous nest and year later. And what this is before 
uh, between the last nest and the new flock. So we will do it a little more, uh, little more interactive. So we had two releases of Anitya, two uh, one year ago, or to the next uh, to the previous nest. So how do you, how many releases do you think we had? It was more, less, more, more. Okay, yeah, you will be right. <laughs> So next, we have 266 commits. So do you think we had less commits or more? More, less. Less, okay, yeah, it's less. And it's less because we actually changed how the dependencies are solved. So we don't get that much dependency updates than we get before. So plenty of those were created by bot before. And we had 13 contributors before. How many do you think this year? More? No, it's less. But I would say that this is because in the last statistic, I probably uh, included the bot accounts and those are removed, so the number would be same. And how many issues? Less. Yeah. Less. less. Less issues? More. No, it's more. But this means more people are actually using the release monitoring.org, which is great. Okay, and closed issues. More, more, more. Yeah, it's much more. Much more than uh, last year. And almost the same number as the created issues, which is nice. And the last version that I presented here was 1.4.1. So how many versions do you think was before? We know that it was six, but what is the version number? It, it is definitely more bigger, so. 2.0. 2 .0. <laughs> 2 .0, no. 1.0.1. We had one hot, uh, hot fix and few minor releases. There wasn't any major change, at least not in the backend. There was uh, some changes in the front end that were actually really big. And how many projects we watch? We had 216,314 last year. So how many we have now? More. more. <laughs> yeah, definitely more. So 309,000. And how many of those are Fedora packages? We have 20,000. 6,600 last year. 30,000. Ah, it's close. <laughs> we didn't get that much new, but uh, I'm not sure right now how many Fedora packages are actually are out there, how many Fedora packages are actually packaged and maintained right now. So not sure if the number could go that much up. Okay. And now look at what the goblins delivered, so what new features we have. So you now see the goblins that are delivering things. Those are actually the dice goblins, but this doesn't matter. Uh, let's say that those are the goblins that are working on resmonitoring.org and trying to deliver things. I'm one of them. Uh, so uh, we had... Uh, one new thing is that we have sort of the list distribution in the project view. I can actually show that. When I switch to the correct tab. Oh, no. Okay, here it is. Okay, so if you saw the project previously and see any, uh, any mappings, it was just how people created them. So... We have a, no a way that you can see them alphabetically. So it's much, much easier to find what you are looking for. And, okay, so let's go to the next one. Okay, let me just switch to slideshow. And the next big thing is migrating to Bootstrap 5. The previous, previously it was been with Bootstrap 3. And it took a great amount to actually migrate it. 
but uh, new uh, new front end looks much more clear, much more clean, much more modern. So the it took the work actually was good and satisfying to see that the outcome is actually something we can look at and we can uh, use, uh, show the people. The next thing that was related to it and why the migrating actually started was we actually had uh, dependency watching for uh, JavaScript packages. And this was actually one of the things that was found in this, that we have really all bootstrap version. Uh, great source source backend. Uh, if you know how the Anitya works, or if you don't, there is plenty of backends you can choose from. I will open the guide. As you can see, there are plenty of them. Those are actually all the git or uh, sources you can uh, watch for. We added the source hat. That was the newest. Uh, that was one of the newest one. And uh, one of them is made custom, so you can create your own regex that is actually trying to parse the page and trying to find the version based on the regex. Okay, so let's go back. We have configuration for disk runnings. Ah, I will show that because that is really nice feature. If you go to any project, let me just go back. And you can see that there are links in the package names. And if you click on them, you will get redirected to the repository in the distribution. This, is, uh, this was uh, originally created just for a few uh, distributions. And those few distributions were just uh, having it hard-coded in the, in the web page. So, the change is that it uh, is no configurable. There is uh, in Anita configuration, you can actually set distribution and the link. And it just adds the name of the package that is uh, specified in the package name. So you can use it for anything. As you can see here is a Fedora. So let's just look at the Fedora one. And it will show you where it is, how it looks. And it's working for the Flat Hub as well. So yeah, it's it's usable if you just want to know what uh, what distribution are actually using it. Uh, you must take in account that the, all of these are actually edited by somebody. There is no automation that is creating the package uh, mappings. So if anybody from the distribution wants to update, it's uh, on you to actually add the correct project. Okay, so let's continue. And we have another backend. This is the CGIT backend, which was added, I think, as the last one, and the GOGS backend. And now we will look into the crystal ball, and we will see what the future holds. So one of the things that we, that is, actually wanted by plenty of people, I closed plenty of duplicates for this one, <laughs> is to have some kind of replacement rules for versions. If you get a version right now, only thing you can do is to remove prefix from the version. And there are some, let's say, projects that are actually creating really strange version strings and this is to help them to actually just find the version in it. So kind of regex that will just, uh, you will set, here is the major version, here's the minor, here's the Votfix version or something like that, and the rest will be just thrown out. So the versions are much clearer. Uh, support for different version streams, this is something that is uh, related to both Anitya and New Hotness. Uh, the different version streams means that uh, we will have, uh, we will watch uh, the separately the versions for 0, 1.0 uh, release, 2.0 release, and so on. Because plenty of people actually wanted to get notifications about uh, the older versions, even if there is a newer 
So this will help with that. A new authentication backend. This is ongoing work. This is already in being done partially. Uh, we will go from the Flask IDC to uh, Outlib. And we already have uh, some work done for Google and GitHub, but uh, we need to add the Outlib support for Fedora because the Flask OIDC is using deprecated authentication number, which is not great. But yeah, we, the, this is something I need to look into and didn't get to it. And the next is RSS feeds for project. So if you just want to watch one project, we would like to have option for you just to add it as a RSS feed and it will notify you when there is a new version. And automatic filling of project details when creating a new project. This is something, uh, if you are familiar with ProtonDB, like, uh, for example, if you, you just put there the ID of the game and it will show you all the, uh, all the things that needs to be filled in. So it will just prefill it. And I would like to have something like this for Anita. You will just put it the uh, URL of the project and it will, uh, it will prefill most of the things for the project. And now some magic numbers for the new hotness. So make it, make it interactive again. So we had four releases till last nest for the new hotness. How many do you think there was this year? Less or more? More. More? No, it is actually less. <laughs> and how many commits? Less, more? More. More? No, it's much less. <laughs> the reason for that is, uh, like I said, in the case of Anitya, we changed how the dependencies are resolved. That is one of the things. And the second uh, thing that is actually uh, bank here is uh, that we actually don't have that much issues on the new hotness, which is another thing. How many contributors do you think we have for the new hotness? We had five. Less? Yeah, we have three. But as I said, this could be the bot accounts I forgot to remove on the last year. Issues created, we had 62 last year, 24. <laughs> and how many uh, closed issues? More or less? It was less, but because we didn't have that much opened issues, so. And version, do you think the version is bigger or <laughs> <laughs> Could you want to actually guess what version do we have right now? No, it's one two point two four. One dot two dot four, and the four one is. Uh, this is actually because there was only a few hot fixes that needed to be done, and otherwise I didn't need to touch it. There are a few feature requests, but they are not high priority feature requests. And for the issues, it's actually, when the issue is uh, reported, it is closed really soon because, the, uh, because uh, it is much better to maintain it and much more stable. It's easier to find where, what is causing it and fixing it. There are a few that we didn't, we didn't actually found out what is causing them, but this is something like Heisenbach, so <laughs> it's hard to find. And what features? Okay, I will ask, how many features do you think there was delivered in the new hotness? Zero. Okay, yeah, it's zero. <laughs> we didn't have any new features, but as I said, it uh, looks like the new hotness is right now stable. There are a few features I'm still waiting for Pagur update to happen for the disk git. Uh, for the disk git to actually be, uh, uh, be useful because 
We, I already have in uh, new hotness option to watch for all new releases, not uh, you're looking only at the newest one, and uh, option to watch only for the stable releases. But both of those options are uh, dependent on this kit to have new version of Pagur, which didn't happen yet. And what is the future? So I would like to have support for flat packs, for Fedora flat packs. So we will just create a new bugs in the Fedora flat pack namespace. Same for Apple. And that is actually all. So any questions? Any questions about head? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just give him the microphone. So. Uh, oh no, I just wanted to say your head is fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> I need. Do we have any any more pins on uh, in uh, flock this year? Because I I would like some pins on the on the head. I think that they do have some pins for giveaways later. So if you're ah, on okay. some of the social nights, I think they have some Fedora pins. But ah, okay, that that sounds great. Really right. Okay, so the question was where did I get it? So I ordered it from some e-shop. I don't I remember. <laughs> <laughs> and I liked that uh, the colors are actually in Fedora, white and uh, blue. So it's nice. And any other question? So forgive me if I'm just oblivious, I don't think there's anything in it for like CVE tracking uh, separate from just actual updates. Have you considered uh, being able to like look for CVE fixes and stuff as well? Oh yeah, that is one of the things, the CVE fixes are not part of the Anitya. Anitya is just uh, watching for new releases, it doesn't know what is in the release. Uh, in case of GitHub, you can look at the commit that is related to release, so this, is use, uh, this could be used. You can look at the upstream, but you need to look at the logs of the project to actually see the patches. Yeah, I was more or less just asking, is that a feature that's been considered uh, for the future, is just automating some of that, at least flagging saying, hey, there's a CV on this, you might want to go look for fixes. Yeah, okay. The, in case of Anitya, Anitya doesn't uh, look for this. I'm not sure if we plan it as feature. I don't know if we even have issue for it. This is kind of out of scope, basically. Yeah. Okay. Just, just right now, it's just looking for, for new releases. And uh, the new hotness is the one that is creating the bugs. So it would need this information from somewhere. And we don't, right now, we don't have it, especially for some of the backends that don't actually share it. You have custom backend, it's usually just parsing some site, so we don't know what is on the site, just looking for the version yeah, that is new. Thanks. Okay, so here are some links. I'm not sure where I can share the slides, actually. You can put it on the sketch page. Ah, okay. Okay, so I will put it there. And uh, yeah, you can look at those. There is blog post. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, it's really a personal interest question because I, I put in an issue about uh, supporting uh, certain source for projects that release like different streams of artifacts that are tracked independently, they versioned independently, so they, like sub projects from a, from one project, and because uh, I got bitten by lack of this feature and because I, and the new hotness filed a bug with an incorrect version that was the like the default let's say sub project version and not the one I was actually pointing to in, in this particular it, uh, yeah project. in this so. case it depends if the projects actually have the tax uh, different for the or projects that are tracked on the same repo. Because if the if the tags are just version, we can actually... Uh, there are subfolders. Subfolders, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm not sure if we can... We don't support that, and it's not that much correct actually using this. So 
it's a, it's a low priority feature in this case. But uh, yeah, it's one of the, I know that there is issue for something like this. Okay, thank you. Okay. So if there isn't anything, I will share the slides later. The blog post is uh, something I didn't update it in a long time, but it's why I actually have the head and why I'm here as a mage and you can actually read why it is like that. And there are some uh, links to the repositories and for the messaging schemas that are actually very emitted by Anitya and the new hotness. And that is all. So thank you. Thank you.